Howdy YouTube family, it's Bolt SRNA coming to you again with another day's topic. Today we're gonna talk about my peripheral nerve workshop that we had at school last week. The workshop included a local CRNA coming out and talking to us and doing a lecture and also us going to the cadaver lab and us seeing on the bodies the different types of nerve tracks and where everything runs and uh, using the ultrasound and actually getting to use the needles and feel what it's like to do the blocks. So it's a really cool opportunity and I would like to take you guys behind the scenes and let you see what it's like when you do these kind of workshops. So let's get into it. The first part of our day started off with one of the local CRNAs who's a practice owner and a CRNA only practice in the area. He came in and he talked to us about his different um, types of blocks he does and the different types of um, fluoroscopy guided blocks that he does and facet blocks and did kind of an anatomy lesson and some ultrasound review stuff so that just to brush us up on all the previous stuff that we've learned before but you know might not be fresh in our brain before we started the actual hands-on part of the lab day. The next place we went into was another room with uh, an ultrasound and some pictures of different uh, common block uh, you know, anatomy on the screen. And one of our professors would go over with the ultrasound on one of us. Uh, we'd lay down and she would scan that part where the uh, block's supposed to be done and just kind of talk to us about different techniques that we could use and different ways that we can find the, um, the best ultrasound guided um, you know, view for our block. Here we're doing the brachial plexus and uh, we're doing the interscaling view and then we're doing the supraclavicular and infraclavicular uh, view and then we're also doing the axillary view. And then here we flipped over and we're doing some of the lower body stuff like the adductor canals and this one in particular is the popliteal which I find difficult. Then we jump to another room which is actually a uh, cadaver room where we have our cadaver lab and uh, we're going through some of the techniques and how to actually inject and stick and actually find our brachial plexus on real you know, human bodies and what it will be more like in the real clinical setting. And then lastly is another cadaver lab room where uh, one of our professors is going over different uh, memorization techniques on how to uh, remember how to draw certain types of the nerve plexus and also then show us on the human bodies where they, they would be and how you would find them you know with the skin removed so you can see what the nerve uh, roots and what their um, tracks are like and, and the muscles that surround those certain tracks so you can find it easier and this is my buddy here showing the uh, back of the leg this is the sciatic nerve and as it splits off into the tibial and then the common peroneal there And this is the foot. Uh, we're trying to locate how the saphenous and the sural and um, the deep peroneal and everything connects down there. Then we jump up to the brachial plexus up here. You can see me identifying the M shape of the brachial plexus with the posterior cord in the back there that carries, uh, I believe, axillary and radial nerves. This right here is a really cool image. It's um, the um, plastination lab. Our university has a plastination lab which is fairly unique and um, so the, our professors will take different pieces of the cadavers when we're done with them and they will plastinate them which means they turn they they put it in a some kind of uh, resin or something and it turns it into a plastic type form that can last forever and, um, and they hold on to that piece of that anatomy to use for instructional purposes later. So this is actually uh, about mid-thigh. This is like a cross-section of someone's mid-thigh. Um, and that is a really good source to, to see how the nerves and the blood vessels and um, you know, the, the muscles and the bones run in, on the inside of the leg. So I'm really grateful that we have that opportunity to have the plastination lab. And then lastly here we've got our professor showing us different memorization techniques. That's the brachial plexus and marmu is a you know, mnemonic that people use to remember that by. All right, wasn't that cool? You got a chance to see what it's like in CRNA school, what you can maybe look forward to with your classroom uh, learning peripheral nerve blocks. 
And also, you need to know that some programs may not have all of the types of uh, tools that my program does. So that's something you should maybe ask about in your interview when you're going and talking to different schools and you're interviewing for CRNA programs. Ask them, do you guys have a gross dissection lab? Do you have a plastination lab? Uh, what kind of peripheral nerve block uh, education do you offer? Do we get to do this in clinical? How many different clinical sites do we get to do it in? Uh, these are all really important questions because nerve blocks are very much the way anesthesia is moving. And if you want to be a successful member of the anesthesia community and be a competitive person in the market, you probably should know how to do blocks at this point if you're going to school. And besides the economics of it, I think it's really interesting to do a block because I love that you can do a single shot block that has a non-addictive potential uh, drug within it and then you can avoid all these other types of drugs that you would then have had to have used to control their pain. And patients love it. I, I love it when I see my patients come to pack you and say, is it over? I don't feel anything. And they're still not feeling anything. Like their arm still doesn't hurt them and they feel fine. That's one of the best things about being in anesthesia is knowing that you know a technique or you know a drug or you know anatomy or physiology and pharmacokinetics and all kinds of stuff like that, you have very specialized knowledge that you can block pain and give that patient relief so that they can have surgery and recover after surgery. So go out there, find you a good program that knows blocks and teaches blocks. If you're already practicing CRNA and you don't know blocks or didn't do blocks when you were in school, go to one of the you know courses that are offered that a lot of people go to that um, teach you more about blocks and get better at them. Start pushing for them in your practice because I think that is a really important goal for opioid-free and reduced opioid anesthesia that we're trying to do in the future. Well, all right, that is everything. You can hit me up in the comments below. You can follow me on Instagram, it's Bolt SRNA. You can follow me on Twitter, it's Bolt SRNA. You can um, like and subscribe this video to let me know you like this kind of stuff and I'll keep making videos for you. And otherwise, that's Bolt out. Hey.